under construction, building a Rotary Toastmasters Alliance. We have a plethora of speakers today from across the Rotary and Toastmasters arena. As Cathy mentioned earlier, we will be record we are recording this session, so your name and image will be on the recording. If you would prefer not to be, please turn off your camera and mark yourself as guest, um, and that will uh, be all right. I'm Anne Sutcliffe. I am president of the Rotary Adventurers Club, a passport style club that spans the whole of my district, our district, which is 1040 <coughs> Yorkshire, <coughs> excuse me, and North Lincolnshire in the north of England. I am also a district governor nominee, as well as district membership lead and a specialist advisor for humanitarian service across Rotary in Great Britain and Ireland. Uh, at this juncture, I would just like to say all Rotary protocols are observed. I would now like to uh, introduce my co-host of today, Cathy Vaughan Swicker, Rotarian and Toastmaster extraordinaire. Thank you, Anne. I don't know how extraordinaire I am. However, I am the president of a newly chartered Toastmaster club called Women Changemakers Toastmasters, and we cater mainly to women who are animators, activists, and advocates, uh, creatives, women running for political office. So we're a special kind of niche kind of Toastmaster club. I also am a Rotarian. Right now, I'm a member of Hanwell Rotary. For District 45 Toastmasters, I am the lead for the Rotary Toastmaster Alliance, and we run a Facebook page, have held webinars, and done other things to help promote the alliance in our area. We are very fortunate to be featured this year in the December issue of Toastmaster Magazine uh, with an article called Kindred Spirits, which is all about the alliance. So please go uh, uh, to, to toastmasters.org and press on magazine and go down to December and you can read all about us and other clubs in, in the world that are doing a lot of alliance work. We're going to start with greetings first today. Oh, we're going to start, I'm sorry, with the land acknowledgement. So to, be to begin proceedings, uh, we have greetings. Uh, and I want to introduce uh, Kurt uh, Colwellchuk. Kurt was born and raised in Winnipeg, where he graduated in computer science and business administration. He has lived and worked as an IT consultant in a number of Canadian cities in London and in Houston, Texas. He has made his home, though, in Calgary for the last 30 years. Since Kurt retiring as a partner in a Calgary-based IT consulting firm, he has dedicated much of his time and effort to Rotary. He's been a Rotarian for 13 years, joining because of his passion for international service. Since 
joining, he has been involved in a number of international projects focusing on education in developing countries. He has been a club president, a club secretary for two clubs, club membership director. He's currently a member of the Rotary Club of Calgary Downtown. At a district level, he's been involved in the District Foundation Committee, serving on the Grants Subcommittee, and then as a District Foundation Chair. He is currently the District Governor for Southern Alberta and Southwestern uh, Saskatchewan, District 5360. Now, he does actually have a life outside of Rotary. Recently, he became a member of the Inspired Toastmasters Club in Calgary, which has helped him hone his speaking skills. He's a runner, a skier, a traveller, a kayaker, a cyclist, a hiker, and most recently, a scuba diver. His partner, Manon Mitchell, is an active Rotomian also. She's a past president of the Rotary Club of Calgary Downtown and of the Rotary Club of Calgary Sarsi. She's also the district governor nominee designate. Together, they have four children and two grandkids, the latter of which do keep them on their toes. So it is my pleasure to introduce District Governor Kurt. Thank you for the kind, uh, warm in, uh, welcome and uh, introduction. Hello, everyone. I'm coming to you from Calgary, Alberta. I hope that you are ready for an amazing session today. I truly wish that I could be with you for the entire event. As Rotarians and or Toastmasters, you all know how important sharing of knowledge is. Today, I'm participating in the training of our incoming club presidents and secretaries of our district. In fact, I'm going to be leaving this room and going back into the main room for, to be presenting in about 15 minutes. I would like to bring you a warm welcome from Rotary District 5360, which covers Southern Alberta and a little bit of Southwestern Saskatchewan. Next year is a very special year for our district. We are hosting the 2025 Rotary International Convention. We are expecting to be joined by 25 to 30,000 Rotarians from around the world. International conventions are a place to go to be inspired, to make new friends, to reconnect with old friends, and to just plain have fun. Our host organizing committee is arranging some very, very unique events that reflect our Western heritage, both past and present. You can look forward to an evening of a rodeo if that's what you'd like to partake in. One of the events that I'm most excited about is a production of New Blood, a story of surviving the residential school experience told through dance, set to the music of Kate, Peter Gabriel, and in this performance, accompanied by a live symphony orchestra. I invite all of you to join me in June next year to experience the legendary Western hospitality that you've all heard about. And pass it back to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kurt, for being here today and taking the time and give our greetings to everyone else in that other room because uh, we want them to come view our video and maybe the next time we're online, they will join us. It is my pleasure to introduce Eugene Seacat. Eugene joined Toastmasters in 2004 to help improve his communication skills for his IT consulting career. He completed his competent Toastmaster manual, which was back then, in one year. He participated in several contests and held many roles at the club, area, and district levels. He attained his first Distinguished Toastmasters Award in 2008. As an IT consultant, he moved from one client to another, hence he was able to join several Toastmaster clubs, starting with Stampede City Toastmasters, current speakers at 
NMAX, Sundial, Esso Toastmasters, Canerators, Fifth Avenue Club, Tech Toastmaster, and is now with West Enders Toastmasters Clubs. Toastmasters has helped him tremendously in his IT career for more than 30 years now, including implementation of enterprise applications with a multi-million dollar budget. He achieved his second DTM in 2008 and is now working on his third. He is currently serving as district director of District 42. Through all his times, Eugene has continued to serve several clubs in different roles as he's committed to give back to Toastmasters as they have given so much to him. Eugene. Thank you very much, Kathy, and welcome everybody. You have a great lineup of speakers today, so I won't take much of your time. I'd like to just focus on one thing that I see. I see a lot of people here from all around the world international wow this is a good show of collaboration this is something that we really have to do continuously i just want to borrow one quote from henry ford if everyone is moving together forward together then success takes care of itself i see this as a success seeing everybody here waiting and excited to hear what our speakers will be talking about. I read some of it. It is really very interesting, all the great work that our members have been doing around the world. I'd like to hear all of that. But the best thing is I see this collaboration, Rotarian and Toastmaster. I heard some people having both membership on Rotary and Toastmaster. I am excited to hear all your story. But I just want to welcome you as district director from Southern Saskatchewan and Southern Alberta. I'd like to welcome you to this collaboration and I give it back to you, Kathy, thank you. Many thanks, Eugene. Uh, that, was, that, that was lovely and uh, inspiring. So without further ado, we move on to our first speaker and I want to introduce to you, Aliyah S. Evans. She's a 21-year-old fourth-year student at Arcadia University's Drodgery School of Computer Science. She's currently pursuing a Bachelor of Applied Computer Science degree. She was honoured with the Sharon Watson Award uh, of Honour for the 2022 to 2023 academic year, recognising her outstanding academic achievements and her commitment to pro promoting diversity and inclusion within the world of computer science. Additionally, she was awarded the Cecil Lindbergh Memorial Award for the 2023 to 2024 academic year, bestowed upon a member of the Arcadia Computer Science Society Board for their com contribution to club initiatives. Furthermore, Alea received the Lynn Ch Chipman Outstanding Volunteer Award for 2023 to 2024, in recognition of her significant contributions to the Arcadia Robotics uh, Programming Competition as a volunteer. She has served as the past president of the Arcadia Computer Science Society and as the past club advisor for the Arcadia Caribbean Union. Additionally, uh, she dedicated her time as a first Lego League mentor for the School of Wolfville and as a mentor for the STEM Development Academy at Arcadia University. Alea is an active member of the Wolfville Toastmasters Club, where she has held positions uh, as Vice President of Public Relations and Membership. She is also a member of Toastmasters 7178, Healing Communicators, located in Nassau, Bahamas. Currently, she holds the role of Area Director for the 2023 2024 term within District 45 D Division D uh, and is also a Division D Director nominated candidate for the year 2024 to 2025. Furthermore, she serves as a club coach for the Cole Harbour Toastmasters Club and mentors member at the Healing Communic Communicators Club. Aaliyah uh, received her Pathways Trails Trailblazer Award 2022-23 
which recognises individuals who have pushed through their education programme in Toastmasters Area 9, District 45. Uh, and, it, and this goes on. She's an amazing individual. She is aspiring to become a cyber security, security specialist and security and enterprise architect. She dedicates her free time to enhancing her understanding of both cybersecurity and network networking. Building Legos is another hobby she enjoys providing a mental break from work. A competitive swimmer throughout her life, she obtained her ASCA Level 1 swim coach accreditation and is a certified ALA lifeguard. She actively participates in the Abundant Life Bible Church and while at university, she attends the historic Wolfville Baptist Church where she is a part of the Media Stream team. The eldest child of her parents, Sherwin, a distinguished Toastmaster and a member of Club 1600, First Branch Toastmasters Club, uh, Club 3596 New Providence Branch of Toastmasters, uh, and Ernest T. Strachan Advanced Toastmasters Club, and uh, her mum, Tamara Evans, a Rotarian of Nassau Sunrise, who serves as a Director of Public Image and Administration, as well as being a member of the Bahamas Integrated Toastmasters Club. Alea's sister, Ariel Tamar, is a prospective member of the Rotrack Club, uh, Nassau Sunset. So I welcome Malaya to speak about her experiences about growing up in a Rotary Toastmasters Alliance family. Alea, it's over to you. When leaders are made and service above self, Toastmasters and Rotary model. Imagine a household where every conversation is infused with the art of effective communication, where every action embodies the spirit of service, and where every individual is empowered to lead with compassion and integrity. Today, I invite you to envision the possibilities of living in a household Toastmasters and Rotary Alliance, a synergy of two powerful organizations dedicated to personal development, leadership, and community service. Living in a Toastmasters and Rotary Alliance means adopting the guiding principles of both organizations into our everyday lives. It means striving for excellence in both organizations and nurturing leadership and communication skills while also embodying Rot Rotary's motto of service above self. It is about creating a home environment where personal growth and collaborations are not just encouraged, but also celebrated. In our household, this alliance translates into a commitment to continual learning, mutual support, and community engagement. Knowing that we have a network of support behind us help us as all my family members are a part of both Toastmasters and Rotary. It means that service projects and community initiatives are not just external endeavors, but an essential part of our family's identity. Join me as we dive deeper into how living in a household Toastmasters and Rotary Alliance has transformed our family dynamics and empower each of us to strive for personal excellence while making a meaningful difference in the world. In our household, the spirit of Toastmasters permeates through every corner, a place where speeches, practice, sessions are happens during Thursday night traditions and where family members eagerly gather to listen, offer feedback and cheer each other on. This is my reality growing up with my father, distinguished Toastmaster Sherman Evans, leading by example. While my dad had taken a break from Toastmasters to focus on his career as an ITC, ICT professional, the impact of Toastmasters on our family didn't truly become premiered until my 11th and 12th year in, the, in high school in the Bahamas. Those Thursday nights after my track or swimming practice were special. I vividly remember my dad, mom, and my sister in the front room soaking in the wisdom of his speeches and offering our pointers. 
It was a collective effort, and when my dad stepped up to speak at the first Bahamas branch of Toastmasters Club 1600, we were all there behind the themes cheering him on. As I entered my 12th year, my interest in giving speeches grew, but so did my fear in speaking in front of others. Joining debate in grade 12 helped boost my confidence. But it wasn't until I surprised my family by joining Woeful Toastmasters Club at the age of 18 during my second year at Acadia University in Canada that I truly found my voice. Toastmasters ignited a spark within me that I never knew existed. I delivered countless speeches, took on leadership roles, and watched as the spark transformed not only my university and career, but also my personal growth. Last year, my dad achieved the prestigious title of Distinguished Toastmaster, setting the bar high. Now, as I celebrate, turning 21 just last week. I set myself the ambitious goal of achieving my DTM before I turn 22, a goal that may seem crazy, but I am determined to achieve. And the Toastmaster journey doesn't end with my dad. After years of seeing the impact it had on our family, my mother also decided to join Toastmasters. She recently gave her icebreaker speech at the Bahamas Integrated Club, and we were all there participating and cheering her on as she had done, as just as how she done for us. Then, as we dive into our Toastmasters career, my mother, Rotarian Tamara Evans, took a significant leap and joined the Rotary Club of Nassau Sunrise. I remember being at her online induction ceremony all the way from Canada. It was a moment filled with immense pride for us all because it symbolized my mom's time to shine. Throughout our growth journeys, my mom had a significant, had sacrificed a lot, sorry. Always putting the needs of our family before our own. Now it is her turn to focus on personal growth and development. And Rotary was the perfect fit for her gift of service and generosity. I remember when, whenever it was any of our family members' birthdays and my mom would cut the cake and give the rest away. A gesture that earned my playful jest in the Bahamian dialect. Mommy, you love to give things away, eh? Her selflessness shines through in her everyday actions. So joining Rotary was a natural extension of her character. Since joining Rotary, I've witnessed my mom's growth in various aspects of her life, and she approaches every task with passion and dedication. Currently, my mom serves as the Director of Public Image and the Director of Club Administration in her Rotary Club. And I must say she's doing a fantastic job. From managing social media pages to meeting various club goals and arranging dynamic speakers for Toastmasters meeting for her meeting. And some of the speakers include Toast members who are a part of Toastmasters as well. She excels in every role she takes on. Sometimes we attend Rotary meetings to support her, watching her shine in her element. My mom's active participation in Rotary has garnered her numerous awards, and she has inspired my sister to follow in her, in her footsteps. My sister is now a prospective member of Rotary Rock Club of Nassau Sunset, and is eagerly looking forward to becoming a, a full-fledged member before the summer ends. She actively participates in community projects, attends Rotary Rock meetings, and enjoy socializing with fellow members. We're all excited and awaiting for her official induction into Rotorac. Both Rotorac and Toastmasters have played a pivotal role in shaping our families, family into a community of leaders who not only embody, but also inspire others to uphold the values of these esteemed organizations. Last year, Rotary Club of Nassau Sunrise 
organize a community pro a community service project aimed to teaching fundamental soccer skill skills to inner city children. It was an opportunity for our entire family to participate, and it held special significance for my 13-year-old brother who has autism. And it held, and as a family, we strive to engage in different activities that would aid in his development and encourage his participation. My parents led the project with enthusiasm, with my dad right beside my mom, actively encouraging the kids with their soccer development. While all this is going on, my sister and I were in Canada and we chaired the mom from afar, receiving updates and photos of the project's progression. When we turned home from the summer, we joined in, watching the kids play soccer and providing them with water and snacks. What struck me the most was the passion for my family had for this particular project. I really admire at the fact that both of my parents knew every single child's name and were generally interested in their well-being. Additionally, every Thursday, my sister and I accompanied my mom to Rotary meetings before we go to work. These meetings challenged me to think differently and broadening my perspective in many ways. One of my favorite memories from Rotary was when my mom's club hosted a charity golf tournament and my sister, Ariel, the current president of Rotary Club of Nassau, Sunset Shinado, and I rode the golf course in the golf cart with the president of Rotary Club of Nassau, Sunset, Sunrise, sorry, Dino. And that's when I realized, contrary to popular belief, I found out that driving a golf cart for me is harder than actually driving a car. And then furthermore, we participated in Toastmasters where my family had my brother, well, Bahamas Integrated Toastmasters Club had my brother participated in one of our meetings. In the fabric of our family's story, Toastmasters and Rotary are essential threads waving a tapestry of growth, service, and inspiration. Living, uh, living in a household Toastmasters and Rotary Alliance means embracing communication, leadership, and service as core values. From, speeches, from speech practice, practice to Rotary projects, the organization have not only shaped our individual journeys, but also strengthened our family's bond. As we reflect on our collective experience from overcoming fears to celebrating achievements, we are reminded of the power of community and the transformative impact of shared values. Inspired by Toastmasters and Rotary, we're committed to excellence, service, and making a positive difference. United by Toastmasters and Rotary, we're empowered to inspire, uplift, and lead by example illuminated the path for future generations. Let's continue to embrace opportunities for growth, service, and connection, knowing that together we can create hope in the world. Thank you. Thank you, Aaliyah. What a great start for the day. Our next speaker is Christina. Cruz. Christina is president of the Heart of the Rotary Toastmasters and treasurer for MVP Advanced Toastmasters. A professional educator, she is passionate about where leaders are made. She served as District 42 Toastmaster Directory, Director when the Rotary Toastmaster Alliance was just at its beginning. She is thrilled that this momentous alliance is now stronger than ever. Through the Toastmasters International Youth Leadership Program, Christina has connected with Interact students and international exchange students, sharing trips on better, tips on better speaking and leading. Learning how combining the resources and networks of these two organizations can impact students and develop our future leaders for success. Christina. Thank you, Kathy. It is incredible to be here today. Jocelyn Hasty, who's online with us today as well, and I were there when this alliance started. 
And it was interesting at that time, we considered the two mission statements. If you're a Rotarian, you'll recognize yours. And if you're a Toastmaster, you'll realize yours. We're not that different. And it's interesting that when we compare our vision statements and our core values, we actually overlap an awful lot. So how can this alliance and these two organizations actually change the world for our youth? I want to talk to you today about the benefits of this alliance and impacting our youth. I'm going to talk about the structured learning program that Toastmasters provides, the global network that students are exposed to, and wow, the community engagement. We just heard it from Aaliyah and her family that we can inspire and motivate through our youth. In District 42, we have a pretty active youth leadership program, and it has impacted many youth. What do we do with this program? We're developing leaders and there's lots of things that happen in the sessions where students, usually high school, but we've actually worked with junior highs and elementary students to help them speak spontaneously, to listen effectively, organize their ideas, using their voice, their words and their gestures more effectively and incredibly to give and re receive feedback. So how do we do it? We've done it online and we've done it obviously in person and both are effective. We have eight sessions of about 90 minutes and there are experienced Toastmasters who provide feedback to the participants as they give speeches and take on leadership roles in meetings. We have consistently watched the confidence of participants soar. It's exhilarating to listen uh, to what these students take away from the program. We finished a program a few weeks ago, and this is what students are saying. With a youth leadership program, Rotary, I've been able to put myself in an environment where people have a passion for helping one another. Our skills are used to leave a good impact on the world, understanding, and the lives of others. How is that not amazing? Another student said, Toastmasters was just like everybody said it would be before I took part. The experience was spectacular because I learned so many tips to become a better public speaker. When we have better public speakers, we have better leaders. And when we have better leaders, we engage our community. Let's take a look at the global impact that this alliance can create for our youth. The program we were just involved in had representation from Brazil, Chile, Japan, Italy, Denmark, and Germany. And they were all in Canada. They were in the Alberta region. The Rotary vision is lasting change across the globe. What is gonna happen when we take all of these cultures and stick them together to learn to lead? We spoke to the students and this is the feedback they gave us. They talked about environmental awareness from their country and what was going on in Canada. They ranted and raved about the beautiful opportunity to ski in Banff. They all had comments about the weather in Alberta and the wardrobe. What do I have to wear today? We were just talking about that earlier. It was snow up to our knees and now it's 15 degrees. One student was asked, would you do it again? Yes, a thousand times. This is the best thing that ever happened to me. Most of them would say these experiences have helped me forever and have changed my life going forward. How can you not want to be part of that? So let's look at the community engagement. And I think we just had a beautiful example from Aaliyah, 21 years old, I can't believe you girl, you're amazing. And your family is already making a difference in your own community. By developing leaders and good communicators, we gain community, community engagement from these students. So what does that look like? We have confident leaders going out into our communities. They're engaging here on their exchange in Canada, but they are now motivated to be more engaged when they go back to their own communities. I love this. All of them recognize they have an open mind for tolerance and they want to be part of peace around the world. This is us creating leaders of tomorrow. So what is the benefit of this alliance? Rotary and Toastmasters. Together, we're going to build leaders for tomorrow that are confident, that have strong voices, that are service-minded, that are compassionate. I couldn't believe the compassion in the room when they were giving each other feedback. And that they are thinking beyond their front door. These students are thinking globally. 
Rotary Alliance founder Arch C. Klump said, no one can tell us what Rotary will be tomorrow. But one thing is certain, what Rotary will be tomorrow depends upon what Rotarians do today. We can absolutely say the same thing about Toastmasters, but imagine what we could do together. What a better way to make a better Rotarian than to develop young leaders. We know and we have, we have actually witnessed the impact of this alliance with youth. Integrating the Youth Leadership Program and Young Rotarians builds us a better future. How can you impact our youth to be better leaders tomorrow? Back to you, Kathy. Thank you, Christina. Um, that was definitely learning for me. And I'm, I am now inspired to take that back to the UK to energize the Alliance and youth empowerment through this, this Alliance. So from one Rotary Toastmasters project to another, I want to introduce Maria Klyakov. Maria is an author, a keynote speaker, and director of Healthy Morning Revolution, a company dedicated to revolutionizing the way we think about grief and mourning. Maria dedicates her free time to Rotary and peace building worldwide. As co-founder of the District 5080 Peace Committee, Maria educates and inspires district leadership, clubs and Rotarians to engage in peace building activities. She is a member of the District 5080 Peace Builder Passport Club. Uh, 5080 District covers Eastern uh, BC in the South, the Idaho, Panhandle and Eastern WA. So it is a cross-border uh, district passport club. Maria is currently president of the Waterton Glacier International Peace Park Association. Um, Waterton Glacier was the first international peace park in the world, inspired by Rotarians almost 100 years ago. So I welcome Maria to speak about the intersection of peace building efforts with Rotarian and Toastmasters initiatives, drawing on the history of that first international peace park from 1931. Maria, it's over to you. Thank you, Anne, for that lovely introduction. Thank you, Kathy, for organizing this. And Christina, all I can say is amen to everything you said, and, and that is the future. But let's take a look at the past for a second, because I love that quote, what Rotary will be tomorrow depends on what Rotarians do today. Well, let's take a look at what Rotary is today based on what Rotarians did 100 years ago or almost 100 years ago. So as you heard, I'm president of the Waterton Glacier International Peace Park. I am so honored to be in this position. If you have not been to Waterton, if you do not know the park that we're talking about, let's, uh, let's show you a bit of the park. We're going to take a quick visit to Waterton. Waterton is just south of Calgary. So for those of you attending Calgary, you will be able to come and visit us. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But here's the thing. In 1931, Rotarians that were attending a conference, and I'll tell you about the conference in a minute, said this phrase, where no boundaries could be seen, no boundaries should be. They were sitting in a, a spot in the um, Prince of Wales Hotel. They were looking down the lake to the US. They were sitting in Canada. You cannot tell from this picture where which mountains are US and which mountains are Canadian. And that's what inspired the sentence, where no boundaries could be seen, no boundaries should be. This is a shared landscape. Peace building and peace conversation is a shared landscape. And this is a place of peace. We create places of peace when we're willing to have the conversations. This conversation didn't end in this one location. What happened was the in 1931, in July, Rotarians met at the hotel. This is the hotel right here. The picture you just saw was looking out the windows down the lake this way. Down here is Goat Haunt. Goat Haunt is a U.S. Uh, landing spot. You can only access it through Waterton, so you have to come through Canada to go there. The Rotarians from four different districts that were in attendance, when they heard the sentence, new action needed to be taken, and Rotarians are people of action, as are Toastmasters. 
the conversation is everything. And so they decided to take this conversation to Ottawa and to Washington, D.C. And what ended up happening is inside of one year, which is unimaginable right now, but in one year, by June of 1932, June 18th to be specific, in East Glacier Park, you will see we had a full delegation here. And this delegation was to celebrate the dedication of the first ever International Peace Park. 1932 is when it happened, 1931 is when it was inspired. And here's the thing for me that is so inspiring about that. Now, almost 100 year late, years later, there are almost 174, uh, sorry, more than 170, I think it's 174 peace parks in the world inspired by this very first one. People of action beget action. The other inspiring thing about this is the most recent Peace Park, which is being worked on right now by directors of Waterton Glacier, is a Peace Park on the India-Pakistan border called Indus Peace Park. So this isn't just about going to nations that get along. In fact, that's the least of it, I would say. This is about recognizing we have to have the conversations where the conversations need to be had. So this gives you a picture of what the first International Peace Park looks like. This is Waterton. The hotel you saw is here. And then down here is the lake. And this is Goat Haunt down here. East Glacier, where the dedication ceremony happened here. And we're going to be in East Glacier this September. Every September, we meet for the assembly. We alternate between the U.S. and Canada. We were in Waterton last year. We will be in East Glacier this year, and we'll be back in Waterton next year. The four districts, rotary districts of the uh, association are 5370, 5360, 5390 to the south, which is Montana. 5360 is, of course, where Kurt is current district governor. 5370 is just north of that because 5360 split into two. And then 5080, as you heard, the district I'm from is an international district which covers Idaho, Washington, and eastern British Columbia. So we are the districts that border the park. Past Rotary International President Barry Razin said something to me that has changed the way I think about peace and the world. I've asked every president, and I've been privileged to be able to do so, if Polio Plus has taught us anything about peace, what has it taught us? And it's Barry's answer that shook me to the core. Peace happens one conversation at a time. So now you need to understand you are the instrument of peace. The conversations that you have at Toastmasters, the conversations that you have at Rotary, the conversations that you have at home, as we heard from our first speaker, and in our communities, it changes lives. And so the lasting legacy here is in this September assembly that we attend, and this one's at, uh, this was our last one um, in Waterton last September, um, we have these conversations and we have a lasting legacy of the peace pledge where on Sunday of the assembly, we roll out this white tape, which represents the border and the, those who want to be on the U S side, those who want to be on the Canadian side, they take whichever side they feel called to, and then they extend their hands and their hearts. And they say the following words to one another in the name of all we hold sacred, we will not take up arms against each other. We will work for peace, maintain liberty, strive for freedom, and demand equal opportunity for all. May the long existing peace between our nations stimulate other peoples to follow this example. And I might add, our nations include not just the U.S. and Canada, but all nations of the indigenous peoples that were the first peoples of the land. We did a peace poll dedication in the park. We are, in fact, um, planting peace poles. We're planning to plant 100 peace poles in the four districts before our 100th anniversary. And we encourage each and every one of you to create a peace pole. It doesn't have to look like the white pole. This heart peace pole, which also has the eight languages inscribed in the trunk of the tree, um, was inspired by students working with an artist in Cranbrook, British Columbia. And if you're ever in Cranbrook, please go visit this at the Peace, po peace Park there. In 2025, as you heard, you've heard others refer, we're going to be meeting in Calgary for the International Conference. Waterton Glacier plans to be there as part of the pre-conference peace workshop. Also in post-conference, we're going to invite you to come down for a tour of Waterton so that you can see the place where all of this began. 
the question for you now is, will you take up the invitation? Will you pick up the conversation? We invite you to be in East Glacier, September 19th to the 22nd. You see the website there, watertonglacierpeacepark.org. You can find all the information you need right there. We invite you to exchange the pledge with someone. If you want to see the pledge or, or download it, you can do so from the website. Join us in 2025 in Calgary and then come join us in the park. Plant a peace pole in your corner of the world. That's what we need most of all, because the pole itself and which languages you put on the pole, that inspires the conversations that need to happen in your community. Have the next conversation wherever it may be. Thank you so much all for your time, for your service, and for your talents. Namaste. Kathy, you're muted. Thank you, Maria. That was so inspiring. I just can't wait to come to Calgary and get, get to meet you and to hear all about the peace efforts and peace building. Our next speaker is Leif Salonius. Leif is a senior consultant with Global Philanthropic Canada. She has 20 years plus experience as a consultant and manager in philanthropy, communication, and marketing. She has a passion for connecting enthusiastic advocates together for innovative new projects which support welcoming, creative, and equitable communities. Born and raised in New Brunswick, she returned permanently to the province in 2008. Leif has an MA in Communication Studies from the University of Calgary. I think I should have some waves there. <laughs> and a BA in Sociology and Anthropology from UMB. And a Certificate in Visual Arts from the New Brunswick College of Craft and Design. She sits on the board of the Fredericton Speakers Corner Initiative. She co-produced the first Speakers Corner in Fredericton designed the promotional branding for the event and is establishing the branding colors and fonts for the ongoing Speakers Corner movement. Leif Salonis. Salonius. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, fellow Toastmasters and Rotarians. When I was approached in March 2022 about creating the first Speakers Corner event in Fredericton, New Brunswick by fellow Toastmaster uh, Kathy Von Zwicker, I agreed without hesitation. COVID had brought us all inside and out of touch with each other. Political and social unrest was boiling in the US and Canada and around the world. I was excited to have a collection of people with diverse experiences open up to the community and to each other. Today, I want to discuss Speaker's Corner, which is an old idea uh, that has great modern value. For those of you unfamiliar with the idea, Speaker's Corner is generally an outdoor physical area where free and open speeches can be presented. It's for that reason that Speaker's Corner venues are usually in public spaces that are open to everyone. Parks remain some of the few places on earth that are open to everyone to spend time free of charge. Parks and natural spaces have a well-researched relationship to social cohesion. Urban dwellers in particular are often at a nature deficit you would say, as they have limited spaces to experience and enjoy the benefits of nature. In public parks and spaces, we socialize, enjoy nature, celebrate special occasions with our family and neighbors and community. This makes these areas ideal for Speaker's Corner events and venues. First and best known of Speaker's Corner venues is located in Hyde Park in London, England, and it was established in the 1800s. There are many such sites now around the world. Anyone can turn up unannounced. Often these venues have 
particular days and hours in which the speeches take place so that people who would like to attend know when these speeches will be occurring. They can speak on almost any subject. However, they are subject to each country's relative laws uh, regarding public speech and communication. Speeches heard can inspire and inform our own reality with those of others. You may not agree with what is said in the speeches. However, Speaker's Corner means that you can also share your own view and often ask questions. Conversations are sparked and ideas become better informed. Let's take a moment to sort of look at the realities of digital communication. Social media, while it is a tool for connection, algorithms dictate our news feeds and put us into funnels and eco chambers of information, and they trap us into conversations with people who are very much like us and share the same views. Each day we see hundreds of sound bites and snapshots reducing complex issues to mere stereotypes. It's a phenomenon that threatens society, impacts elections and the lives of people in marginalized groups, to name a few examples. Speaker's Corner is more than just a platform for dialogue. It's a catalyst for change. Just look at history from suffragettes to the civil rights activists, Speaker's Corner has been a crucible for some of the more transformative moments in history and social connection. Here in Fredericton, St. Mary's Ferry Landing on the north side of the city at the intersection of Setansis First Nation community grounds, a public walking trail in Fredericton North and beside the beautiful St. John River, Fredericton's first speaker's corner was held in June, 2022. People who might never end up in the same room or in the same comment section online found common ground and shared their lives and concerns. We heard different diverse voices and learned of inequities in our community that we might not be aware of otherwise. We learned of people supporting the disabled by connecting their abilities with jobs to match. A man who'd spent 20 years in a refugee camp before arriving in Canada spoke of his inspired female role models in his life, including his grandmother, and how deeply he felt concern for newcomer African women who were coming to Canada with only their children, not their partner, who had few social supports and very little time to learn English. People learned of an organic teaching farm in the city that offered free vegetables to people in need. And lastly, as a resident of a nearby co-op for mentally ill people, expressed something so painfully simple. She wanted a cat. Pets weren't allowed in her building and she was lonely. Though they weren't allowed in her building, the advocate for affordable housing, who was also speaking at the event, promised that they could speak afterwards and discuss the problem and possible solutions. He was pretty sure she could get a cat. In the end, she got herself a cat. The event was a series of worlds colliding and unexpected allegiances were formed. So my fellow Toastmasters, by reclaiming our truly public dialogue, we can reclaim our humanity and recognize the realities of others. Speaker's Corner is a sanctuary for free thought and fearless expression, creating a free and accessible space where the divisions created by social media can pave the way for a more united and compassionate world. Thank you. Many thanks, Leave. It is great hearing about people gaining knowledge, using skills and becoming better informed. And on that, we want to pivot to our next speaker to hear about the realities of something that is happening right now as we speak. <clears throat> I introduce Tatiana uh, Leap-Vinyak. 
She is the Vice President Education DL4 Chamber Toastmasters in Ukraine. She works for the United Nations Development Programme in Ukraine to apply her skills and expertise for the benefit of the Ukrainian people. We help to restore and develop regions and communities damaged uh, or suffered from the war. Uh, Tatiana finds it very rewarding to see how the efforts and things that they do and we do to improve the lives of others. She lives in Dnipro, Ukraine, some 130 kilometres away, merely 130 kilometres away from the front line. So I welcome Tatiana to speak about her first-hand experiences of living in war-torn Ukraine. Thank you, Anne. Good evening, dear Toastmasters. So, when I was a child, the veterans of the Second World War were invited to my school to tell us, the children, about the realities of the war. I had one question, which I actually never asked. How were people, civilian people, living during the war? Were the bombs falling on their heads every day? Was there hunger? How was the work done when a lot of men were at the battlefield? And now, unfortunately, many years later, I have the answer to this question. On the 24th of February, 2022, I woke up because of the explosion. There was a Russian missile that hit an airport I live very close to. Now there is actually not, nothing left from that airport. I couldn't believe that this was really happening. In the center of Europe, in the 21st century, how could this be possible? What kind of a mad person there is to, to give such an order to start a war? But this is the reality we live in for the past two years. I live in Dnipro. This is a large city in the middle of Ukraine with a population of about 1 million people. You can see it in the very beginning, in the very center of Ukraine, I'm sorry. And uh, Dnipro is a very important military, medical, supply, volunteer hub for the whole Ukraine because of its proximity to the front line. This is the map which you now see on the on the on, on your screen, dated March 2022, right when the war began. Now, even now, Dnipro, the front line from the Dnipro is at the same level here. So it's about 100 kilometers from the front. It is some 62 miles. So when the war began. People were in panic. What to do? Where to run? Will Ukraine be really taken in three days as announced by Russians? Whether to leave, whether to stay, uh, will Dnipro be surrounded and there would be no way out? Because here you can see from the map that all the roads, but one leading from Dnipro, they're leading to actually to the areas with the battlefields. Kyiv direction, Kniyiv, Sumy, Kharkiv, Luhansk, Donetsk, Mariupol, Kherson, Mykolaiv. All those areas were where there were the battles. I actually, from the very first day, I had the possibility to leave, to go to the Western Ukraine, or maybe to go abroad, but my husband and I, we decided to stay. Because Dnipro is the place where we belong. It's our home. Our parents live here and they refuse to leave. So we decided to stay. And besides, one of the reasons was that just two months before the war started, we moved to our new apartment. Uh, so 
we were constantly monitoring the situation because when you have only one possible way out of the city, you want to make sure that you don't lose this last opportunity to flee. So I was reading the news, news watching the news, listening to the news 24 seven, literally. It was really difficult to make the situation worse. There constantly were air alerts. Air alert, even now in Dnipro, means that a missile is targeting the city and you have from two to five minutes to get to the shelter before this mi missile can reach its target. Uh, luckily, in my house where I live, there is a very good basement, very good shelter where we were hiding. Those air alerts at the beginning of the war, they were from 16 to 20 hours a day, which meant that I hardly slept two or three hours in my bed. The rest of the time I spent on a chair in a cold shelter because it was February and beginning of March. It was cold here. So there was also one good thing. We got acquainted to our neighbors. We even became friends with some of them. And now after two years, I even may say that I have some small sense of nostalgia of those days spent in the shelter at the beginning of the war. How, I don't know, silly that uh, this may sound. So those first, day, uh, first days, weeks, even months of the war, People were in panic, literally panic. They were staying in lines to withdraw cash, to buy food, to, to fuel their cars. They were staying in a traffic jam going out of the city to flee this area. And really, people spent from two to, I don't know, four or five hours in lines under the missiles flying over their heads. And in the end, they often got an answer, sorry, no cash left, sorry, no food left, no fuel left. Because those first weeks, there was no food here. It was sold out during the first minutes when the shops were open. And I had some thoughts that I am likelier to die here because of the hunger than of a Russian missile. So during that time, I was a real wreck because I was constantly reading the news from the front line. I was talking to people. I couldn't sleep because of the missiles. That was a really <laughs> difficult time. I even was afraid to take a shower and wash my hair because when you are in a shower, you understand that if the air alert goes on, you will not be able to get to the shelter in two or five minutes time. I, it was really scary to take a shower. And I was going mad slowly, but steadily. So one day I decided, enough. If it's my destiny to die young, so be it. But I will stay sane. From that day, we switched off internet at night in order not to hear the air alerts because with the window closed, you don't hear those sounds from the outdoors. <laughs> I stopped reading the news. I made a call to my hairdresser asking if she would be interested in having my hair done. I made a call to my nail master and I tried to live a normal life from that day on. I even find a cafe which opened its doors to the clients. So that was my start, my returning to the normal life. Now, 
And uh, later, more and more businesses, they resumed their operation and started working, just like my hairdresser. So even now, when two years have passed after the beginning of the war, businesses still have to struggle working in this reality because, <coughs> sorry, uh, because even now, the curfew here when you are forbidden to stay outdoors is from midnight to five in the morning. At the beginning, it was from seven or eight in the evening till eight in the morning when you were forbidden to go outside. That was, I think, a nightmare for our dogs, at least. So now businesses try to adapt. Some of them now, after two years, they keep on working during the air alarms. Some of them close. There are a lot of military people in Dnipro. There are a lot of people who are injured. Here, there is a huge demand in blood donations because Dnipro is the first place where they would bring injured soldiers. Also, of course, there are still missiles flying towards the city. And now on this slide, you can see the situation as it looks right now. So our army was able actually to start that massive approach of Russia towards Ukraine. And with the time, they actually managed to push them back. And this is the current situation dated April 2024. But the deadliest case for the civilian Ukraine happened in Dnipro in January 2023, when a Russian missile hit a residential house just in the middle of the city. That was Saturday, middle of the day. That was a um, cre not Christmas, after the New Year party and people were spending time with their families. So during that day, 46 people, among which six children were killed. More than 80 pe people were injured that day. 63 flats were completely damaged. More than 200 apartments were very seriously damaged. Sorry, 63 were destroyed and more than 200 were damaged. This is the house I used to live before the war. I, I left this house two months before the war start, started. I knew a lot of people from this house. I knew the people who were injured here. I knew those who lost their relatives here. My husband was driving past that house when the missile hit it, and he was really lucky because a boulder hit the car moving just behind him. So even now, after a year, it is so difficult for me to remember the day. But if you come to Dnipro tomorrow, you will see that this is the life goes on. People are having lunch in, in the cafes. They are hurrying to the offices. They are doing the shopping. They are working along the Dnipro River. They are just, the kids are playing on the yards and everything seems just normal. But then you can hear the air alert on and nothing happens. People just keep on doing their things. They don't try to find their shelter because actually now after two years, I think everyone here, just like me, at certain point of time took a decision to live a normal life, at least to the extent possible, because this is actually the only way to survive here under these uh, circumstances. This is the reality of individual life here. 
But if you consider the situation as a whole, at the country level, you will understand that the real hell is going on here because the country is really war torn. Millions of people lost their houses. Many of them, thousands of them, lost their husbands, their fathers, their sons. Some of them lost their wives, daughters, and mothers. And in the city, it is, there are some things that actually don't allow people to, to live this normal life. Because, for example, the kindergartens, many of them are still closed because they don't, the same for the schools, because they don't have enough places in the shelter to fit all the children going to the facility. So many of the children are still learning online. Also, during the war regime, wartime regime, men are forbidden to leave the country. And there are constant <laughs> there are constant clashes be be between those who were called on to the army or who volunteered, because there were really a lot of people who volunteered to go to the army, and those who remain civilian. Also, there is a huge problem of veteran reintegration because many people are now returning to civilian life because they are injured. Many of them lost their limbs. Some of them lost their minds. And those people need to live among us and we need to learn to live with them. Some of those veterans, they require a special, a special attention towards them. They want <coughs> to be treated like heroes, and they definitely are. But some of them just say, please, I'm just a usual man or woman. I don't need your pity, your praise, or anything, anything else. So you never know how to treat those people, how, whether to pity them, whether they need the sympathy or they need to be praised. It is rather difficult. Another point is that the wives who lost their husbands at the war, they are angry at those wives whose husbands are safe at home. And I can understand them. And this is the reality we live in. So in this society, we will have to live many and many years to come because those are not the problems which can be overcame in a moment. But now we, as Ukrainians, we became so dedicated so passionate, so devoted, brave, and loving as never before. And I believe that we will be able to win this war, no matter how difficult it may be for a country which is three times smaller than its enemy. But I believe that it is possible and we will win. Thank you. Thank you, Titania, for sharing that with us. It's hard to know what to say. Strength and courage. When we started up our Changemakers Toastmasters, we reached out to clubs all over the world that were named Changemakers Toastmasters. Um, I, I, the only one responded, and that club was Kiev Changemakers. I soon became a friend with them. And uh, however, 
when the war started, we reached out again to say that we would come and support when they needed us. And when they got back up online, they called us to be part of their meeting from time to time. And we filled in for people who were not there and not able to take the Toastmaster roles that are required in a meeting. Through them, I met the good people of Chambers Toastmasters, <clears throat> which T. Dana uh, works for, um, is a member of. And through them, I became really interested, and in, uh, all of them, um, in the work in the Ukraine, and especially the rotary work in the Ukraine. And that brought me <laughs> to going to the Ukrainian Christmas Project Fair that Rotary International and, and, and Rotary E-Club of Ukraine put on. And that's where I met this next speaker. I am so pleased to introduce Ukrainian entrepreneur, economist, investment consultant, and educator, Ross Luklak. He has more than 30 years of management in foreign relations, investments, innovation, organizational consulting. In recent years before retirement, he taught and managed the mini MBA programs at the Business School of the Banking University in Kiev. Rost is an active public feature figure. After Euro Maiden, in 2014, he coordinated a voluntary group of economists for several years. Together, they developed and submitted to the Verkhovna Rada of Ukraine, a reanimation package of econ economic reforms, which included the development of industrial parks, deregulation, stimulus for entrepreneurship, and other incentives to encourage economic growth. A Rotarian since 2005, Rost has been twice president of his club, the Rotary Club of Kiev Capital. Since 2018, he is the Rotary trainer for the Rotarian community in Ukraine. He is currently the executive director and chairperson of the Peacekeeping Commission for his club. On their behalf, he is currently working with Rotarians and other organizations, local and worldwide, to coordinate and provide support and rehabilitation programs, as well as ensuring the delivery of thousands of units of humanitarian aid to Ukraine, including dozens of electric generators, medical equipment, hundreds of water filters, five fire engines, seven medical evacuation vehicles, the club is involved with Citibank and the Rotar Rotary Foundation and installed 16 brand new modern homes in the deoccupied Chernev region for families who lost their homes as a result of the Russian aggression. And of course, in the true spirit of today's event, we need to mention that in 2004, Ross was one of the charter members of Ukraine's Odessa Toastmasters Club. Thank you, thank you, Katie. And uh, um, you know, it's very interesting. Uh, in 2004, we didn't make this. What does it mean? Could you could you explain me what what does it mean? Does it mean applause or? It oh, means I applause, like and it is it's like applause. Done, <laughs> I it like. is done for people that are deaf. Oh, ah, oh. okay. I have some slides because uh, in I started as photographer. You know, when I uh, was uh, teaching, uh, when I was um, studying in university, I I also worked uh, <laughs> uh, to have some uh, extra money. So I started as photographer, and I like picturing. So I have a lot of picture, and I want to share with you. I and the. Uh, Organizers, they gave me the uh, power of uh, uh, share screen with you. Do do you see? Do you see? Beautiful. My... It looks great, Russ. Thank you. Okay. How Rotary helps Ukraine to save the world. Very good. Very good. And how to get it like this? So, do do you see our picture? 
A lot of people in that control. picture. Yes. Are of you the, in that of, picture? Of the yes, I'm in the center with president of Rotary Club. This uh, medal, how to say? It's uh, we uh, gathered together when we decided to uh, how to say meet up before uh, me meeting the new uh, new 2019 uh, year. It was a uh, year. Um, we remember it. Uh, generally, our club was mostly involved in uh, helping children. We have special uh, internat, school internat for kids with uh, special needs here in Kiev, and we helped them uh, many years, maybe 20 years. Uh, of course, we love to um, trip around the world, and we are very uh, uh, happy when uh, Rotary International President Mark Maloney visited Kyiv five years ago. And our lovely, lovely club uh, project uh, is uh, Peace Square. And it was very interesting for me, this presentation about peace polls. Uh, I saw it before, I've heard about it, but I think I should uh, um, deep in that issue much, much uh, deeper because we got a uh, square uh, in the center of the city in downtown of Kyiv and we decided to repair it. And during the five years, you see, we made the new, uh, how to say, uh, plates, new, uh, uh, new basements, etc. And each clubs make uh, to uh, make their donations, our friendly clubs make their donations, and we settled uh, the name tax on each uh, bench. Uh, you see, IDP Kids Rehabilitation. Uh, five years ago, we started this big problem. What means IDP? Internally displaced persons. It's like to say in local refugees. Uh, when Tatiana, before me, uh, she said that many people uh, from the east part and south part of Ukraine, they should move uh, to the center of the city, to the west part of the city, and they became local refugees. And that, of course, that affected to kids uh, very much. So we started to help those um, families, those uh, mostly it was uh, women and uh, kids, one or two or three, and a little luggage in one hand, nothing more, which uh, came to, to Ukraine. So that was how we started to, to be involved in this um, long process, which is now is continuing. You, you, you know that uh, uh, what now we say uh, full-scale war, it started 10 years ago when Russians invaded our Crimea and the uh, east part, we say Donbass. It's industrial areas. It was occupied in the uh, 2014. And uh, in 2022, they started to occupy it much, much more. As Tatiana showed you, they were near Kiev. You see here uh, liberated places, uh, liberated or we say deoccupied places are marked by green color uh, here. So now uh, we, we understand Russian language very easy. We could uh, hear the uh, TV broadcasting, uh, radio, internet. We see their newspapers and their um, mad leaders. And they say, we will go to La Manche, we will go to Warsaw, we will kick uh, Berlin, we will go to Finland, et cetera, et cetera. We will... Uh, be, we will over, over hand over all the all the world. So now, my friends and uh, our relatives, our neighbors are like um, warriors uh, for the for the whole world, for the peace and uh, democracy and uh, liberty, power of choice for all the people. Now in Ukraine, we have seventy five Rotary clubs plus 26 Rotaract clubs. Rotaract means for uh, youth. It's from, it's like 
uh, how to say university uh, age and um, up to 25 30 years so almost in each uh, city in each region we have rotary clubs uh, and in Kiev for example we have 12 in uh, Kharkiv uh, we have um, nine or ten in Lviv we have almost ten so but we have some uh, uh, regions where we have not yet rotary clubs as Chernihiv if you see near uh, the Kiev uh, to the north uh, east north of Kiev uh, you see Chernihiv region we have no rotary club there so when Russian started to go to Ukraine uh first day first uh, it was first night actually first evening we uh, managed to create the coordination committee we name it peremoha means uh, victory victory and we became to um to, together to decide how could we how could we help to to those in need we um, directed uh, for four directions uh, you see here it's uh, first aid to people affected by the real uh, war situation also other side is medicine itself also life-saving technique fire and rescue cars and of course kids children and kids it's also our uh, focus so we started to help them as we have I, I told you that in Kiev we have uh, 12 rotary clubs so we started my club rotary club of kiev capital we decided to help to chernihiv area because they were very much affected by russians um, the same situation as tatiana said no food no medicine no humanitarian uh, needs goods etc many problems there so we started to buy it in uh, kiev shops and direct it uh, to the chernihiv uh, area and uh, you see here in the left um, you see our president you know uh, every year rotary clubs change its uh, president so our war president in red hat uh, Lesia Jadan with her um, Andri with her uh, husband and uh, little son and uh, second daughter she had uh, two daughters and many people who received our our help after that we after that maybe in a month maybe 40 days when our troops our defenders deoccupied very big amount I, I, I showed you the map you saw it in a green uh, color and uh, we get back to those regions where Russians were before we saw everything what could be stolen was stolen all windows was were uh, how to say shield broken so it was it was a mess totally a mess we started to help to uh, colleges to medical college to lyceum etc and then um, of course it, it, it was a uh, it was a already a, a winter time um, we had many we had many um, applications from kindergarten schools or communal enterprises to help them with uh, energy with heating generators so here in the in the photo you see sokolatko means so sokolatko means in ukraine uh, little falcon little falcon it's rehabilitation center also kindergarten so it's rehabilitation for kids who lost their parents actually it's not formally uh, for many of these kids uh, the parents is um, are uh, not um not strictly uh, are lost maybe they are in the in the russia somewhere maybe they were killed maybe who knows but these kids were taken from very bad war situation and given to this rehabilitation center so we started uh, with uh, this um, uh, uh, energy energy uh, uh, generator also here on the uh, right side you see a model house it's very interesting family family of Kovalenko Kovalenko is family name they have eight 
eight kids, eight children, and their uh, village was totally occupied by Russians. Actually, Russian troops went through the main street of the village, and when they were uh, deoccupied, when they were kicked off, they, one of the boys saw how Russian tank moved its uh, um, gun, and this boy just cried, go out, everybody go out. And they maybe in 20, 30 seconds, they just went out of, this, of their house. And after that, the tank shield and crushed their, tank, their uh, house totally. So they lived in the basement of their neighbors, of their friends. And uh, when they came to our Rotarian there in Chernihiv and said about this uh, story, uh, we decided to help them. You know, Rotary as Toastmasters, it's a very huge uh, network of friends. Uh, we very like to visit other countries, cities, to have conferences, buy business, etc. And we just openly asked our worldwide Rotary friends to help with this. And we found uh, uh, Sweden, Sweden uh, Rotarian, who with his um, uh, friends and uh, family decided to pay for uh, model house for these Kovalenko families. And that was very good uh, start because after that we, uh, for now, we stayed settled uh, already 16, 16 um, new model houses. Of course, medicines, Chernihiv region, Krivirich, Kramatorsk hospital, number three, number two, we provided them with many, many equipment from uh, our Rotary worldwide friends. Our Swedish friends brought, last summer brought big uh, two, two cars, cargos with uh, equipment, all equipment for hospital in Kramatorsk, Dnipro city uh, region. Uh, here you see our uh, president. She was president after my year. She is also past president. Now she's in Australia. She should go, the, went uh, to Australia. Uh, she lived in, in near Sydney with her uh, daughter. Uh, you, you see here, uh, she's in the booth in the Rotary Convention, convention um, inviting uh, Rotarians to help uh, Ukrainian kids. Also here you see in the left uh, uh, part, uh, the Swedish friends in the center, Lina Ekman. Uh, she was um, governor, district governor this year. Uh, they just sent some 2000 uh, euros to buy this nice uh, uh, boat. Uh, this boat was very needed to our rescuers because I tell you, I told you that Russians, they stolen everything they could steal. So it was very interesting. It was a uh, fire rescue unit without anything. They had no, nothing. So we should buy everything for, for them, every equipment. And that was very good start for us because our Sweden friends, they, um, brought um, some fire um, cars, rescue, fire rescue cars, and now generators, also medical evacuation cars. Uh, they just buy it in the uh, uh, internet uh, and uh, send, it, uh, send them to Ukraine. Uh, children is our focus, was our focus, and is now, now here you see in the, in the, photo our Christina Famova. She is lawyer, advocate. She is a multi-kids mother, we say. Uh, she has four uh, children and she's our current president. Uh, uh, we provided many, many, and we still provide many, many rehabilitation events for children. Uh, our Gen Germany friends supported with uh, uh, tabs with planchets, it's very good because, as Tatiana also said, uh, kids here, we they uh, should um, uh, have their classes in basements. 
in metro station in Kiev and Kharkiv. And so they should uh, have their uh, laptops or planchettes. So it's very, very important for them. You remember I told you about uh, Little Falcon Rehabilitation Center. They were they are in Chernihiv region in the center of the forest and the Russians came to, from the left side, from the right side, and these uh, little kids, they just went to the basement and all the bombs, all the guns and the shelling was up their um, kindergarten and of course all the windows were damaged. So we helped them with uh, worldwide uh, support from Australian and Sweden and American Rotarians. We helped them with new uh, windows, with uh, heating boiler, so they will have uh, heating there. And what's very interesting uh, uh, project with wish letters to send, you say Santa Claus, I think. Yes, we here we send St. Nicholas. St. Nicholas, it's, it's the same. So kids, every they wrote the wishing lists, letters to Santa Claus and our friends from Sweden, from, I told you, from Australia, very many, more than 50 people. They collected many, many um, boxes with gifts and we delivered these gifts to the kindergarten and it was totally, it was it was amazing, like uh, this St. Nicholas, uh, our friend from our friendly Rotary Club, Dirk Lustig, uh, Swiss journalist, uh, when he came with this, they thought it's like a fairy tale, you know, it's like a miracle <laughs> with these boxes, with these gifts. Um, not everything is uh, very funny. Our war president, Lesia Jordan, she died in February this year. Um, and um, tomorrow we will go to the Rotary Square in the downtown of Kiev. We will we will plant the tree in her in her memory, in her memory. Uh, we are going uh, further. Now we are working with our uh, satellite club in Krivirich city. Krivirich city is very big, long, I will say, long industrial city. They have very many um, uh, refugees, local refugees, IDP, IDPs, very many kids, uh, many veterans, uh, 6,100 uh, veterans in Krivirich. So now we are finishing the kids rehabilitation uh, center and we are waiting uh, for finishing the hospital rehabilitation uh, center. We will um, fulfill it with uh, uh, special equipment for rehabilitation. Actually, it was the subject how we and Katie um, uh, meet each other. Um, one one uh, Canadian friend, Gary, with Ukrainian uh, family named Darichuk, he came to bring to Ukraine to front line some very, very important um, how to say, toys for soldiers. And we met with him uh, and we decided to uh, make a project together. And uh, now it's it's in its process. We already uh, raised uh, two parts of this project. We have in the process of the number three needs. So if you, your Rotary Club would like, or your Toastmasters Club or your whatever friends, if you would like to enter this uh, project, uh, please, I will, uh, in the end of this, I will show you my contact and also organize the organizers. They have uh, um, contacts, please, you're welcome. Also, we have now in the work uh, one, uh, project with um, Babcock Ranch. It's American Rotary Club and some other Rotary Clubs from Florida. They are working on uh, uh, solar panels. Uh, the idea is to help to our uh, east and uh, north and south regions with uh, solar energy. And we started this idea to work out even before Russians uh, crashed and uh, uh, bombed our uh, Tepla Energy uh, station. So it's very much, much more uh, important even now than before. 
Also, we remember our Sokolyatko, a little falcon uh, kindergarten the rehabilitation center. We provided them with uh, uh, special tools. So uh, these teenagers, they are now working with a sewing machine for girls and also a carpenter workshop for boys. So we help them. We don't, uh, we didn't um, stop our, um, um, our important or how say our attention to them uh we have every, actually in the war situation everything is needed everything starting from notebooks for kids and developing toys for those uh, kids who are in some special needs with development to season clothing shoes hygienic medicines uh, etc so um, please welcome Rotary Kiev Capital Rotary Club. We have very um, uh, active Facebook page. You're welcome. Welcome to this is my uh, contact. I'm very open in my club as past president and as current executive director and chairman for um, foreign um, peace building. Uh, relations uh, i'm responsible for this uh, this uh, uh, things i'm uh, blessed with english uh, i could understand what you're talking i can um, talk with you and uh, we can emailing with you so please you're welcome to to be part of this of this worldwide uh, family of supporting be a wizard be a fairy tale for these kids um, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Many thanks, Ross. An exemplar of how Rotarians and Toastmasters are compassionate and ambitious uh, on behalf of the world to affect change, despite the challenging circumstances. We would like to thank all our speakers of today to do so. I would like to introduce Jocelyn Hasty. Jocelyn is a communication resilience and leadership coach as well as a Toastmaster. Her goal as a Toastmaster has always been to build skills she can take out into the real world. Part of her vision as a District 42 Director 2019 to 2020 was to collaborate with leaders from Rotary as the Alliance with Toastmasters rolled out. She was and remains excited about the magic experienced through collaboration between aligned organizations. I welcome Jocelyn to provide a closing response to all our speakers. Yes, good morning, good afternoon. I guess we're all in the afternoon now. What a group of speakers. First of all, our, our welcomes that we had from Anne and Kathy and Kurt and Eugene. And then the emphasis on our youth with Alea. And Alea, I feel confident that you can get that DTM by the time you're 22. And my advice would be <clears throat> to keep speaking to a variety of clubs because that, my friend, is the way to do it. Christina, your dedica dedication to youth is constant and ongoing. And I know that both Toastmasters and Rotary recognize that our future is in the youth. We talked a little bit about the past and the importance of the Peace Park. And I live close to Waterton and I've been there many times and I didn't understand the history. And I promise you, Maria, I will go there again. And when I go there again, I will go there much more knowledgeable than I have been. And I think certainly from our speakers that followed, we thought more about that concept of peace and how important peace is and how we all in our worlds are looking for sanctuary. And I wish sanctuary for our Rotary and Toastmasters friend that are in more torn parts of the world. I wish for peace parks <clears throat> and peace poles everywhere. And I wish you all 
an amazing weekend. And thank you all for your inspiring presentations. I know I am leaving this, this present, these presentations a little sadder, a little wiser, and also more hopeful. Thank you, Jocelyn, for saying so eloquently what we all have in our hearts. Thank you, everyone, and thank you, Jocelyn. We're coming to the close of our day, but we would be remiss to leave without inviting you all to come to a Toastmaster meeting. As you know, we're a personal development program. We're one of the premier ones in the world. We focus on helping our members grow in their public speaking, communication, and leadership skills. Our meetings are highly structured, but they are all focused on helping people move forward in their development. We have a time where we have speeches that are prepared. We have evaluators that give feedback on those prepared speeches. And we have an impromptu speaking time called table topics. There's so much else that happens at a Toastmaster meeting that it's hard to wrap it up, especially in a short period of time. I just implore that each of one of you drop in online or in person to a Rotary Club, a Toastmaster Club in your area, and a Rotary Club too, <laughs> uh, to find out what it's all about. And Anne? Uh, thank you, Kathy. Um, in closing, um, Rotary is the best decision. I've ever made. It's bigger than anything I've ever done. Uh, I've done things I've never expected I would be able to do and meet some amazing people, including all of you. Uh, Rotary for me is flexible around my life, moving with the ebb and flow. I've learned so many things, gained so many skills, a lot of which has helped me with my career to date. Together, we see a world where people unite take action to create lasting change across the globe, in our communities, and in ourselves. Never a truer phrase has been said. Rotary has not only changed my life, but those around me via the projects I have completed. I would therefore recommend anyone and everyone to drop into a Rotary meeting and experience the wonders that the organisation is and can give. Um, so I want to uh, hand back to Cathy for her closing remarks on the Rotary Toastmasters Alliance. Thank you, Anne. When I talk about the Alliance to Rotarians, they say, I see what Toastmasters would gain from joining with Rotary, but how could a Rotary Club benefit from joining with Toastmasters. And then when I talk to Toastmasters, they say, I see what Rotary would gain from being in an alliance with Toastmasters, but whatever would we do with a Rotary Club? <laughs> Seriously? Is this how you go about making friends? If every relationship you get involved in, you say, what am I going to gain from it? In May 2019, Toastmasters International and Rotary International told the world that they had formed a unique strategic relationship, an alliance, drawing from the strengths of the many similarities and complementary differences of their organizations. The people who set this up, set both organizations, researched the alliance, and they decided how it would go forward. On both our websites, they tell us how both organizations will flourish from cultivating a relationship with the other. 
I say, let's trust them. Let's trust the process. Let's think about, we're just going out to make a few friends. Invite a Toastmaster club or a Rotary club to go out for a social evening. Go to one, invite the other club to one of your meetings. Maybe you'll find you do have so much in common that you want to, to do something with them on, on a longer term basis. But just go, step forward, go on that adventure. And you never know how you will grow and change because of it. Step into the unknown and see where it takes you. <music>